Your doctor has recommended that you undergo a splenectomy, or spleen removal surgery. But what does that actually mean? The spleen is one of the organs in your body that works to clean your blood. The spleen is located behind the stomach and to the left of the liver. Specifically, the spleen picks out and destroys red blood cells that are no longer useful. A splenectomy is the surgical procedure used to permanently remove the spleen from the body. Reasons for removing the spleen vary. Most spleen removal surgery is performed in an emergency situation during which internal bleeding may be putting a patient's life at risk. This program assumes, however, that you are not currently in an emergency setting. In your case, the reason for removing the spleen may be to treat a blood disease, blood congestion, Goucher's disease, white blood cell deficiency, the growth of a tumor, or the growth of cysts. Occasionally, the spleen is removed as part of an action taken to determine the best course of treatment for Hodgkin's disease. In the case of spleen removal, there are no real alternatives to surgery. Choosing to allow a diseased spleen to remain in your body may eventually put your health and even your life at risk. Traditional surgical procedures performed by making an incision large enough to expose the entire operative area are called open procedures. Your doctor believes that your medical condition and overall state of health make you a good candidate for less intrusive laparoscopic surgery. A laparoscope is a narrow tube that contains a light source and a small video camera. Using a laparoscope, the surgeon is able to operate by making one or more very small incisions through which the sterile laparoscope and possibly other instruments are inserted into the body. Using the laparoscope's video camera, the surgeon is able to explore and inspect the interior of the abdomen often allowing the surgeon to see with greater detail and with more clarity than with the human eye alone. However, it is important to understand that during the procedure, your surgical team is always prepared to convert a laparoscopic procedure to an open procedure, should they feel that your condition requires a more direct approach. If the surgical team makes this decision, you will find upon waking up that your doctor has made a larger incision and that healing may proceed more slowly. Converting to an open procedure will affect the length of your recovery and will probably require hospitalization. Of course, no surgery is completely risk-free, but your physician believes that if you decide not to undergo the recommended procedure, you may be putting your health at risk. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. The anesthesiologist will begin to administer anesthesia, most probably general anesthesia. The surgeon will then apply antiseptic solution to the skin around the area where the incisions will be made. Place a sterile drape around the operative site. After allowing a few minutes for the anesthetic to take effect, a small incision will be made above the umbilicus. Then a hollow needle will be inserted through the abdominal wall and the abdomen will be inflated with carbon dioxide. An umbilical port is created for the laparoscope. One or more incisions will be made, with care taken to keep the openings as small as possible. Once in place, the laparoscope will provide video images that allow the surgeon to carefully cut the ligaments that connect the spleen to the diaphragm, as well as the spleen to the colon. Now the doctor can gently pull the liver aside then pull back the stomach to reveal the spleen. 
All remaining tissue between the spleen and the stomach, including small blood vessels, as well as the spleen and diaphragm, are cut. The main vessels that supply blood to the spleen, the splenic artery and the splenic vein, are closed off and cut. Finally, the spleen is maneuvered into a special retrieval bag, where it is broken into smaller pieces and removed through one of the laparoscopic working ports. All of the instruments are withdrawn, the carbon dioxide is allowed to escape, and the skin is closed with sutures or staples. Finally, sterile dressings are applied. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, Try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from 1 to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. Splenectomy surgery only rarely leads to complications. In adults, the liver and other parts of the immune system are susceptible. In children, however, the loss of the spleen can weaken the immune system. In either case, your doctor may prescribe a series of antibiotics to help your body's immune system fight off bacterial infections, such as pneumonia and pancreatitis. Another potential side effect of surgery is a persistent residual neuralgia, or pain, around the scar. It can be either localized or general. It may develop soon after surgery, or even weeks or months later. Usually it will decrease in intensity with time, but in very rare situations, it can become permanent. More frequently, patients report achiness in the shoulders and chest. This is caused by the body's reaction to the carbon dioxide used to inflate the abdomen and it will clear up in a matter of a few days. The most serious problem would likely be a puncture in the bowel or liver, but these are very rare occurrences. Finally, as mentioned earlier, the surgical team may decide to end the laparoscopic procedure and convert to an open surgery. <laughs>